Hello everyone. I hope you are doing well. Today is our monthly Q&A. Before we get to the questions, let's get high on tea. This week's tea is the Dongfang Mei Ren or Oriental Beauty Oolong Tea. Dongfang means Oriental or Eastern. Mei Ren means beautiful girl or beauty. Not only does this tea have a very beautiful name, but also has a great flavor. To produce Dongfang Mei Ren, only the two new leaves at the top along with the bud that picked. So, the tea leaves are very tender with white hairs on each leaf. As a result, people also call this tea Bai Hao Oolong or White Hair Oolong Tea. This tea belongs to the Oolong Tea category and is commonly produced in Taiwan. As mentioned in prior videos, Oolong tea needs to be fermented, but the degree of fermentation varies from slight to deep, depending on the type of Oolong since Oolong tea is the vast tea category. Dongfang Mei Ren is a deeply fermented tea. So, what are the unique characteristics of Dongfang Mei Ren? Well, the unique aspect of this tea is due to its natural process. The tea leaves get bitten by the insect named Jacobiasca for Mosana, more commonly known as the tea jacid, that lives on the tea plantations. That small insect bites the tea leaf, thus inducing a chemical reaction that imparts a unique honey fruit taste to the tea. As a result, insecticides or pesticides simply cannot be used to grow this tea. By the way, since the tea jacid is a very small insect, its bite will not leave any visible holes in the leaf. Instead, typically there will be some dark red colored spots left due to its bite, indicating the chemical reaction responsible for its unique flavor. Dongfang Mei Ren is good for digestion, immunity, and cardiovascular function. Like most other types of tea, people drink Dongfang Mei Ren mainly for its flavor. So, what is the flavor of this tea? This tea has a strong honey fruit aroma caused by the specific process, especially the biting from that small insect. To brew Dongfang Mei Ren, most people prefer to use water at 85 degrees Celsius for one minute of brewing time or longer. However, I prefer to brew it with water at 95 to 100 degrees Celsius for 30 seconds to extract a stronger flavor followed by lower temperature water and a longer brewing time for every subsequent brew. Let me show you a box of Dongfang Mei Ren. This tea, this is the tea leaf. This is the tea decoction. Very nice color and a strong fragrance. Dongfang Mei Ren is really unique. The sweet taste of Dongfang Mei Ren on account of the insect bite is, in my opinion, a very interesting feat of nature. Likewise, Dongfang Mei Ren is a great recommendation for anyone who prefers tea to be fully pesticide free. I'm sure you will enjoy Dongfang Mei Ren tea, the oriental beauty. Do let me know your experience with this tea in the comment section. With that, let's take a quick look at questions for today. 
First, from uh, one direction, T preservation time. Next, from uh, one direction, prenatal qi. Next, from uh, Bei Feng Dao Ren, Lan Na Zha for Xing Yi Spear. Next, from uh, Dark Green Duke, Spear Vicious Sword and Saber for Fa Jin. Next, from uh, Dark Green Duke, Guan Dao in Tai Chi. Next, from uh, Dark Green Duke, Two Handed Blades in Internal Style. Next, from Dark Green Duke, Weapons in Xiu Dao. Next, Dark Green Duke, Yang Shen and Yan Shen. Next, from Rick Vegas, T Recommendations for Blood Stagnation. Next, from Eric Potter, First, Hebei Xing Yi vs. Hebei Style Xing Yi. Finally, from Eric Potter, Second, Xing Yi in Modern Wushu. One Direction asked a couple of questions, which I will answer one by one. His first question is about how long to preserve tea and how to do it. This is a great question. Some types of tea, like poor tea and white tea, actually get better with time. However, many other teas, such as green tea, cannot be kept for too long. Normally, two years is long enough, and uh, if you do not consume it by then, the flavor may degrade. Some other teas, such as uh, old Wulong tea, introduced in a prior video, can be kept for longer as well, but you may need to bake it once a year in order to improve its flavor, which is not an easy task for most tea drinkers. So, on average, two years worth of storage time is long enough for most types of tea, apart from some special types such as Pu'er, white tea, and old Wulong, which can last a lot longer. <clears throat> now, let's talk about the storage and the preservation of tea. Tea storage and the preservation depends on the type of tea. For example, poor air should be stored in a cool and dry place. Most types of tea need to be kept sealed in tea bags or boxes to minimize exposure to air. Wulong tea such as Tie Guan Yan should be refrigerated in order to slow down its oxidation process. There are many other methods as well, which I will save for the future. Enough tea talks for today. His uh, second question is, quote, Would you please expand on developing prenatal qi? I thought prenatal qi is a fixed amount that can never be increased. I also thought as we age, we gradually use and decrease our prenatal qi. End quote. Prenatal qi cannot be quantified or measured. Yes, according to the Xiu Dao concept, we only consume prenatal energy since we inherit it from our parents. But one of the objectives of Xiu Dao practice is to transform postnatal energy into prenatal energy, a reverse flow of energy practice. This is why Taoist practitioners throughout history practiced Xiu Dao. Bear in mind, prenatal qi and its consumption are just metaphors, not be taken at face value. I hope that answers both your questions. One direction. Let's move on to the next one. Bei Feng Dao Ren asked how to develop good Lan Na Zha for Xing Yi spear practice. This is a great question. Thank you, Bei Feng Dao Ren. Very nice name, by the way. I'd like to give a brief answer today. Lan Na Zha are three basic movements used in Xing Yi spear practice. Xing Yi spear practice is a well-developed spear training system consisting of basic movements including Lan Na Zha, among many others. In addition to the 
five element spear and twelve animal spear along with some spear routines. Despite the Xing Yi spear's practice becoming less popular in modern times, it is an important and effective practice regardless. Since Lan Na Zha are three basic Xing Yi spear movements representing outward blocking, inward blocking, and forward striking, you should practice each of them specifically. Good quality practice will involve power generation from the Dantian area and energy transfer to the spearhead. Any weapon is just an extension of the limbs, so cultivating the ability to transfer energy out of the body to the weapon is the most important practice. You should get used to wielding a weapon, for example, the spear. With time, you will become one with the weapon. We call this Ren Xiang He Yi, self and spear integrated as one. Of course, it takes a lot of training, but as long as you can relax your body and extend your energy to the spear, you will get there. I have some old spear demo clips on my channel. Let me replay a small part of right now. Feng Daoren, I hope I have answered your question. Again, this was only a brief answer. I will do a dedicated weapons series in the future. Let's move on to the next one. Dr. Ben Duke asks five questions, which I will answer one by one. First question, quote, I often hear that the spear is excellent to train Fa Jin, with Lan Na Zha as the basics. Does it mean that sword or jian and saber or dao are not good for Fa Jin training? Or are they used to train other specific skills? End code. The spear is the best weapon to train comp comprehensive body power, especially on the back and the shoulders. The importance of the spear training does not discount the importance of other weapons. For example, the sword is good for strengthening the hands and the wrist toward Fa Jin execution, while the saber is good for training the arms and the elbows area toward Fa Jin execution. So, there is no such term, not good for, in weapons training. In other words, while the spear is the best for training comprehensive body power, other weapons are instead better suited for localized training in some body parts. His second question is, quote, In one of your videos, you said that Guan Dao is the primary influence for Tai Chi, but how come only Chen Xiao Tai Chi practices Guan Dao? Do the other Tai Chi cells miss important skills by not training with Guan Dao? End quote. Yes, speaking from the research of both other practitioners as well as my own, Chen style Tai Chi's movements are based on Guan Dao movements. Other styles do not practice Guan Dao, but they focus on other weapons such as the sword. Actually, even most Chen style practitioners do not practice Guan Dao. There are many reasons. First. The Guan Dao routine is very long and requires a lot of uh, physical strength. Also, most Tai Chi practitioners focus on bare hand trainings instead of uh, weapons training, 
which is just a choice by many practitioners. I do not think other Tai Chi style practitioners miss any important aspects without Guan Dao practice since the term skill here cannot be defined by the mere practice of Guan Dao, or the lack of it. So, it should not be a factor in judging one's practice. In other words, training a particular weapon does not affect the possibility of becoming a great Tai Chi practitioner. Here's the third question called <clears throat> Why are Miao Dao and other two handed blades like Shuang Shou Jian not popular in internal martial arts and generally in Chinese martial arts? I can only find a few martial arts like Pi Gua Zhang and Tang Lang Quan that practice Miao Dao and the codes. Well, each style normally has its own preferred weapon. For example, the Deer Horse Sword is unique to Ba Gua but not to other styles. The Tai Chi Sword is very unique as well, which cannot be found in other styles in terms of its power and body structure. So, Miao Dao was promoted by Pi Gua practitioners. Guo Changsheng and his son Guo Ruixiang, while Shuang Shou Jian was promoted by Tang Lang or Primantis practitioner Yu uh, Yu Chenghui. Furthermore, there is already a wide range of weapons already practiced in the internal styles, and some weapons practiced in the internal styles cannot be found in other styles, and vice versa. His fourth question is, quote, Is there any Xiu Dao practice that uses weapons on weapon-like tools? There are Dao's rituals that use a sword, so does it influence Xiu Dao practice too? End quote. In Xiu Dao, we do not use any weapons. Xiu Dao is a pure energetic practice. Using any weapon is an external approach in the Taoist context, which violates the principle of a Xiu Dao practice. Technically speaking, Taoist rituals use the sword and other devices, but Taoist rituals have nothing to do with Xiu Dao itself. Advanced practice of Xiu Dao cannot be achieved through religious rituals. I have clarified a misperception about the Xiu Dao and the religious rituals in the video titled Xiu Dao Concepts 16 Refine the Emptiness and Merge with the Dao. Lian Xu He Dao. Link is in the description. Dark Winduk also asked another question about Yang Shen and Yin Shen in a separate comment. Let me answer it briefly here. First, I have already introduced Yang Shen in the same Xiu Dao video as mentioned in the previous answer. Link is in the description. So, what is Yin Shen? Shen means spirit. Yin Shen, an important term in Dao's practice, means the beginning stage of a spirit practice. In other words, Yang Shen is at a rather advanced level while Yin Shen is at a comparatively slightly lower level. Also, Yin Shen can be considered to be the spirit in a ghost-like state. Yin Shen is an important topic that will be covered in a dedicated video in the future. So, please stay tuned. Hope that suffices for now. Dr. Renduk, you have asked a lot of interesting questions in the last few videos. I see you know a lot. I really appreciate it. Once again, thank you for your questions. Rick Vegas asked about the possibility to remove blood stagnation that is left over from old, very deep wounds by consuming tea. Thank you, Rick. This is an interesting question. Well, First of all, let me emphasize that tea in Chinese culture usually means the beverage made from the leaves of Camellia sinensis. 
Of course, people may add other ingredients like flowers or herbs to traditional defined tea, but that is more of an exception, not the norm. And uh, most serious tea drinkers will avoid such mixed beverages. So, to answer your question, there is no such tea made from Camellia sinensis leaves that can provide the benefit of uh, removing blood stagnation. If someone suggests any tea with that promise of this benefit, it's either well-intended but ignorant advice, or a blatant lie. Having said that, let's now consider Chinese herbal medicine, especially medicinal tea. In the West, some Chinese medicines may be considered tea. But that's never the case in China. There are many tea sign formulas to remove blood stagnation, and some of them could be considered tea. I recommend you consult the qualified tea sign practitioners in your area for further advice. I do not give personalized TCM advice online, so that will be the extent of my recommendation to you. Rick, I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Now, let's look at the final set of questions for today. <clears throat> Eric Potter asks two interesting questions. He first asks if there is any difference between Hebei Xingyi and Hebei Style Xingyi. In the Xingyi community, we normally use the term Hebei Xingyi to express the whole term Hebei style Xingyi or Hebei Xingyi. So, the linguistic structure is the name of the geographic region followed by the name of the style. Hebei is the geographic region while Xingyi is a style name. Together, Xingyi created in the Hebei region is called Hebei style Xingyi, while the Xingyi created in the Shanxi region is called Shanxi style Xingyi or Shanxi Xingyi. Bear in mind that there are Hebei style Xingyi practitioners in Shanxi, and there are Shanxi style Xingyi practitioners in Hebei as well. Naturally, this causes quite some confusion during communication within the community. For example, Hebei Xingyi sometimes gets translated as Xingyi practice in Hebei even though it may actually be Shanxi style Xingyi. So, unless both you and your audience precisely understand what you are talking about, it is better to add the word style after Hebei to avoid any ambiguity. Here's the second question, quote, Would the Xingyi used in modern Wushu be considered Hebei style Xingyi? End quote. Modern Wushu Xingyi, a hybrid style that uses the Xingyi movements with the modern Wushu approach, can be called whatever as the practitioners want. In my opinion, they should just call it Wushu Xingyi instead of pretending to be traditional Xingyi. It is not at all an important issue here. However, what's important is another phenomenon that deserves a lot more attention from the community. Many modern Wushu Xingyi practices dishonestly call themselves traditional Xingyi instead of the more appropriate Wushu Xingyi. To make matters even worse, some Wushu background people teach the so-called traditional style Xingyi, which is, in my opinion, totally wrong. There's nothing wrong in teaching Wushu. What's wrong is the dishonesty in calling it traditional. I still do not understand why that kind of people shy away from calling their practice by its appropriate name. Anyway, I really do not want to go any further on this topic. Let's stop here. Eric, thank you for your questions. I hope I have answered them both. By the way, 
I would like to once again express my appreciation for your continued support toward me and this channel. You have helped me clarify my position on some events and concepts, especially I consider to be a service to the community. It's quite obvious to me that you have a righteous spirit. But I implore you to avoid hostile language in your communication with community members and always assume good intent, no matter their real intent. You have a great mind, so why not use great languages to express it? Anyway, thank you once again. That brings us to the end of today, this month's Q&A. Thank you all once again for sending your questions and I hope you found my answers informative. As always, please don't hesitate to ask follow-up questions or entirely new questions. Thank you for watching. See you next time and enjoy your practice.